I was working with a 12 year old yesterday and um, as the lesson was progressing, I started to think about, you know, how difficult it is sometimes to really assess what a player needs at a certain time of his development. And I wanted to present this video just on, on certain things that led me to the green light hitting ideas and how I train hitters and trying to give them the appropriate message at the appropriate time. That's really what green light hitting is. And so what I first want to make aware to people is every pitcher has a, has a three-dimensional prism that they compete with. And what that means is this front edge is, is your fastball. And then that back edge way back here is your off speed. So every pitcher has this depth factor, which causes problems for hitters, right? Um, certainly at the highest of levels, it's a, it's a very deep prism that they could really throw it hard and they can back it off. Uh, they have a width and the width is often re referred to as command on the edges. And then they have this height, the ability to sink it and the ability, the ability to, to be up in the zone with, with high spin rate or something to that effect. So every pitcher competes with a certain prism. And, and many times it's why it's difficult to gauge when pitchers are successful. They don't have this jump kind of stuff that, that uh, doesn't really, you know, make you go, wow. But the hitter has to deal with this. And that's really difficult for hitters. So I want to just make you aware of that. The other thing I want to make you aware of is in a perfect world, okay, at the highest of high levels, I think most everyone agrees what an ideal swing looks like with respect to moving through the window. People might debate how you start it and how you finish it, but through the window, you have to enter in the top corner and you have to exit out the back, right? That's this idea of being short to the ball and being long through it being ultra quick, but having great depth, okay? Like that's the ideal thing that we're after. Well, I, I, I share that message. Like I'll tell anyone that's willing to listen, I'll tell nine year olds and 10 year olds and 12 year olds, it doesn't really matter how old you are. Like I will absolutely share that message. But what I will tell parents is, hang on a second. doggy treat break. What I will tell parents is um, you might not want that right now. Like it might be a little too early to try to obsess over this. And there's a lot of reasons why, but let me just explain this. So young players play on a smaller size field than older players. And what that means is this area right here for a hitter at the lower levels, it's success. And at the higher levels, it's failure. So a young player could hit five balls inside that bag right here, be five for five with five doubles, feeling good about himself, going home, dinner tastes better, mom and dad are excited. You know, I don't know if that's the time to say, hey, this isn't going to work. Like I'm not really comfortable sharing that message. And quite honestly, they don't ask for help when they're inside that bag, okay? But it's coming, like eventually it's coming. But when you, when you graduate to the, the bigger field, these become foul balls and then you're running deep counts and then you're hitting in uh, one, two and O2 oh, counts. And now the prism expands and it's really difficult to hit. And, and what, what, what happens is when players are taking advantage of this blue area, what that means is oftentimes, it means their swing is entering the zone on the outside of the prism and it's exiting on this side, right? So you can, you can imagine that you have these, these longer swings that are exiting in this direction. And you know, this, this is a swing error. So in the green light hitting model, we talk about timing errors and swing errors. And swing errors is, is you know, the fancy phrase would be spatial errors, how your swing moves through space, right? So what we're talking about now are just swing errors. We're not talking about timing errors. That's a different lecture altogether. But spatial errors, I want to talk about the difference between accuracy and precision. Okay, so at the highest of levels, this is what great hitters look like. Here's your target, and they're missing ever so slightly around that middle. Okay, if you go to, to, to batting practice at the big leagues or even college, I mean, the ball flight is so darn consistent because 
their impact position is so close to optimal. And this is what precision looks like. Precision looks like this. But the, the problem with precision sometimes is when you are precisely off. So high level hitters, they take this, this very precise cluster and now they, they tend to go through ruts where it's really, really difficult for them because they're precise, but they're precisely off. So you get the same kind of foul ball. You get the, you get the same kind of swing and miss. But, but that's, that, that's the higher level idea of precision. But precision is often confused with accuracy. So at the lower levels, what tends to happen is kids' swings aren't as precise. They aren't as strong in the core. They don't ha have as great a hand-eye coordination. So these misses aren't clustered. So these misses are more, they're more variant, they're spread. And at the best, in the best case scenario for young players, you often get this kind of, of, uh, of distribution where you know these X's are, are near the target but they're not nearly as precise as when you get older, right? And then this, this of course, is the, is the, unfortunately, this is what you, you see often at lower level baseballs. You, you see Im, imprecise and inaccurate swings where they're failing so many different ways. And what, what you often have to do is you often, you often have to get those kids to fail a certain way. You have to try to make them precise. And it becomes this battle of, are you choosing accuracy or precision? I, I know that's complicated, but uh, it's, it's, it's where in, in the world of spatial errors, it's what you have to recognize uh, when, when you're working with hitters. So now I want to just switch gears and talk about this, this idea of, um, and it all, it all relates, but, you know, so many times people are obsessing today about the home run and launch angles and, and, and things like that. But you need to understand something that, if this is my ball and this is the midline, this is where singles live and this is where home runs live. And they're really, really close. Now imagine that's your target, okay? Imagine that spot right there is your target. If you're trying to hit home runs and this is your distribution, this is how you make contact with the ball, you can, you can see that the home run might live here, but because your distribution is so spread, in actuality, what happens is you miss here and here. So telling young kids to hit home runs when they're not, when they're not accurate and they're not precise leads to a lot of swing and misses, a lot of around the zone. And, and then eventually, eventually maybe, right, if, if you're precise, if you're precise and then this is the home run, well, now it, it makes sense because now your miss is are living right here, but it doesn't, it doesn't make a ton of sense for young kids that don't have this, this ideal swing to be home run driven. It, it really creates big errors for hitters. And what happens with the single is because the single is higher up on the ball. Now your misses, your misses, right? Creates more opportunities that you actually have a better chance of being successful. So one of the things I'm constantly balancing when you work with a young player, again, there are many great hitting coaches that don't have to understand any of this to know what's appropriate and what's not appropriate. All I'm trying to, to, to communicate with people is, is when, when you're working with a young kid, right, you have to be aware that they don't move like their older counterparts. Their misses aren't nearly as clustered and you can't assume that, that they have this great core and they have this great posture and everything comes down to the hands. Because a lot of times, you know, when you hear people talk about proximal to distal, they'll use that language. What that means is their big muscles are, are, are working correctly. So it allows the little muscles the ability to be precise. If you don't have your big muscles working correctly, it's really difficult to be precise. So then you have this big spread of error. So uh, something to consider, something uh, something to be aware of, uh, you know, for everyone, for coaches and, and parents and players, this idea of spatial errors, accuracy and precision, the depth of the prism and how we enter it, and really uh, the timing of advice, what's appropriate, what's not appropriate.